Well, turn that up okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, camera two, can you put you in? You set? Can somebody get the emergency doors? Okay, Cookie, I need some names. Hey, look, you do your job, I'll do mine, all right? I want to hear, I want to hear another question number seven really clean. Really clean. Hello, people. How you So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. It doesn't. Gotcha. 30 seconds. Oh, bit impatient, are we? Well, that's too bad. I'm just kidding. Hey, come on. Let's get going here now. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Next up, the land upside down under. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Hang on tight, because here we go. Complete this accurate scientific comparison between North America and Australia. In Australia, the crescent moon is backwards, cyclone twist in the app. Help, Auntie M! It's a twist! You know, and it's like driving on the other side of the road. I can never get used to those backward cyclones. It's question number two. The name in this category is Cooking Shows Hung Like a Horse. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If the galloping gourmet slowed down to the next slowest gait, he'd be the what? The strutting gourmet, the trotting gourmet, the cantering gourmet. The cantering gourmet. A canter is between a gallop and a trot in speed. It's also what he'd be called if he sang in a temple. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Two heads are better than one. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Now, for this question, I need your undivided attention. Which is not true of the famous Siamese twins, Chang and Aang. They each married the same woman. They alternated homes every three days. Chang had 10 kids, Aang had 12, or they changed their last name. They didn't marry the same woman. Well, I guess they couldn't menage that toi. Although, technically, I'm not sure that is a toi. How about You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. Here's the category Fish Tales. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. If biblical character Jonah were gonna write a book about his former living arrangements, which Disney character might. Pinocchio. <laughs> He also spent some time inside a whale. All right, come on. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. It's time for a Snickerfish restaurant. The category for this gibberish question, your tush and shrubbery. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, let's see if you can untangle this one. Get yourself ready. What does this rhyme with? Hear me go pound the pole. Go for it. Type in your... Hear me go pound the pole, very tush. The monkey is illegal. How about it? Hit me with the category. Gotta be quick. Get in the, mix. Whoa, whoa. Push the category. A marriage made in heaven. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Which of the following sitcom men could the Brady's mate Alice Nelson marry and keep the same surname? Woody from Cheers, Darren from Bewitched, Mel from Tony Nelson. <laughs> Well, I sure hope Tony prefers the sturdy, mature, asexual type over the curvy, beautiful, magical type. Okay, pick it. Zaba dooba dabbin, question seven. The category behind this question is brilliant insight or just poor eyesight. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Which artist might have placed the following ad? Help wanted, a uh, French painter, uh, needs impressionable model, you should look good in uh, pastel and be easier to see the farther away I get. Who placed this ad? Monet, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, or Rodin? Nice try, Rodin's a sculptor. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. 
Claude Monet, French Impressionist Painter. How about it? Wow! Wait, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate! The category is comic strips and pain relievers. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. If you translated their names to English, which comic strip characters might appreciate a couple of pain relievers and an ice bag? Emperor Ming and Dr. Zarkov, Calvin and Hobbes, the Cats and Jammer Kids, or the Bumps Dads? Cats and Jammer. That's is on German word for hangover. All right, good. Ooh, oh, what's your sign? It's number nine. This one's going to be astronomy and laundry detergent. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. If planets were housewives, which one would not have a reason to use whisk? Neptune, Saturn, Mars, or Uranus? <laughs> Uranus. <laughs> That's cool. And wrong. And let's see the correct answer. Planet Mars, the only one of the four without ring around the planet. How about it? Hit me. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? Here's the category. The old ball and chain. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. The sacred institution of marriage is symbolized on a coat of arms by a vertical stripe down the middle of a shield. What is this appropriately called? Disembowelment, agonization, crucifixion, or impalement? Uh, yes, I'd like to direct your attention to your score. Watch closely. Too bad you didn't pick this. Impalement, perhaps the happiest moment in a new couple's life. We've got ten questions down, and for ten more, we're going on to round two. Woohoo! Now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. Okay. Next up, my up, my down, my pride and joy. It's going to be worth $4,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. Which 70s TV character is often called Mr. Eddie's father? Tom Corbett, Ted Baxter, Wilbur Post, or Herman Munster? Tom Corbett from the TV show The Courtship of Eddie's Father. How about it? Uh-oh. Test Nut Slick Crime Store. Once again, it's time for a... Tinkerlick Test Drum. Here's your gibberish category. Quick Rastafarians. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Here we go. With what TV show intro does this rhyme? Rasta man say weeding bullet. Don't get tripped up by the punctuation. First hint, it's about a superhero. Aquaman. Okay, let's see if you know it. The most powerful man on the planet, but the guy still wears tights. You gotta respect them for that. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. All right, let's see what we're doing here. To pork or not to pork? 6,000 bucks is riding on this one. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Now, to avoid disease, what is the minimum temperature porky pig should let Petunia pig reach before eating her? 451 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees. I mean, honestly, anything below that, and she's just frigid. Okay. The name of this category is... Would you run that by me one more time? And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4000 bucks. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. 
Which of the following sentences could have only one possible meaning within the bounds of logical reality? The film crew shot a pilot, the nun kicked her smoking habit, the boy's nose was running, or the ball player stole third base. Oh my god! The gaffer has a gun! And here's the right answer. The boy's nose was running. Why? You ever seen a nose with legs? How about it? Hit me. Uh-oh, best butts fits mine, whore. Once again, it's time for a Flicker Pitch No Scum. This gibberish questions category is sayings that have annoyed America. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Okay, now put your fingers on your buzzers and tell me, what does this rhyme with? Well, dive, golem, man, pie, ramp, sp Let's see what you got, sir. The category, it kind of smells like raw fish. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Okay, you're having a sushi dinner with friends. Tonight is kind of special. They put raw tuna, raw octopus, and cooked egg sushi in front of you. Gonna test your Japanese here. What will you be eating? Ika ebi kappa, teka taco tamago, anago unagi saba, or teka kappa taco? Actually, that's Latin for I'm mad, you're mad, just give me the car. Now the correct answer is Teka Taco Tamago. Always go for the alliteration. Oh, Jiggy Jack is gone. Let me hear you scream. It's question 17. This one's gonna be love is everywhere and it doesn't wash out easily. Now you're gonna be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth six thousand bucks. If your lover said to you, hey, you're romantic, you'd probably feel pretty good about yourself. But what if you were told you were euromantic? What would your lover be saying then? You can diagnose diseases by examining urine. You derive sexual excitement from urinating. You really focus on bladder control or you smell of urine. You're in. You're out. Should have picked this. You're a diagnostician of pee, and if that's not romantic, what is? How about it? Hit me with a category. Eighteen. the slightly? Number eighteen. The category behind this question is candied astronomers. Hello, this one's gonna be worth six thousand dollars. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Galileo is considered one of the great minds of all time. If while he was alive you injected butterscotch into a cerebellum, what immediate result might occur? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Here's what you should have guessed. He might lose his coordination. See, the cerebellum controls motor activity. If you poked it with something, your coordination might be affected. The butterscotch was just for fun. Alright, come on, hit. He's me! That's the 19. The category is fast food and merry old England. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. If the guards at the Tower of London took their common names literally, which sandwich would they prefer? Monterey chicken sandwich, Big Mac, Whaler, or filet of fish In case you're curious about the correct answer, uh, Big Mac. Those guards are known as beef eaters. Okay, pick a category. Wow, honey! honey. It's question number 20! <laughs> the name of this category is Hallmark Cards and Concrete Ponds. Now, you're going to be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6000 bucks. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which character on the Beverly Hillbillies is the only one who should logically send Granny a card on Grand... Ellie Mae, Granny's true granddaughter.
enter the attack. If you see two words together and they form a match, uh, you already know what you're doing. Well, make sure your match fits this clue. Whom do you represent? Remember to keep that glue handy, you'll need it. See ya on the other side. find your niche. Not the worthless trivia is going to help you find a decent job or anything, but who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know. You don't know Jack. Hey, great show everyone. Really, really great. Joel, 60 seconds. Ice cube. My soda's hot, but I like my tepid. And bring Justine some of that peroxide stuff for her forehead. How do you work the telephone? Okay, you're a single player, is that right? Okay, why don't you type it? Hey, you know what? I also need to know if you had plans for a 21 question. You want it? You got it. 30 seconds. Okay, your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. That's B as in, uh, bring home. Okay, fine. Let's get going. Come on. This one's gonna be TV Family, as you wish were yours. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, help me out here. And when you know the answer, buzz in and type the answer. I'm trying to remember. What's the name of that TV show? You know, it starred the guy who was the voice. Okay, let's. If you want backstabbing, money grabbing, and Joan Collins, you gotta go with Dynasty. <laughs> Wow, I bet Heather Locklear is so glad she moved on to better shows. Come on, we need a category. Category, it's d liz -ious. And this one's worth $2,000. Okay, take a shot at this. If you were to enter a deli and order a sandwich named after the film that won Elizabeth Taylor an Oscar, what might you order? The cat on a hot tuna mouth. The who's Liz Taylor won the statue for her performance in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> if you wanted a sandwich named after her first Oscar, you could order the peanut butter field eight and jelly. Oh, what a roll that was. This category is strikes, spares, and personal beliefs. Two thousand bucks riding on this one. Check this out. If you were on a bowling team known as the Bowling Luddites, which of the following teams would be your most hated? A Luddite is someone who's opposed to technology, especially in the workplace. Someone that's opposed to bowling alleys is called tasteful. Okay, pick a cat. The light sounds of question four. And this category is literature for boneheads. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, suppose you ask someone in lit class for help, and they're even dumber than you. What famous work is your classmate summarizing? So, this old guy has three daughters, right? And two are total jerks, and one's kind of cool, but he doesn't like her. There's some okay fights, and... It's King Leah. <laughs> 
I think the moral is be nice to your parents or something. Take your pick. Uh-oh, press what's with Mime Door. It's time for... Ticklish Questions. Here's a gibberish category. Don't touch my candy. This gibberish question starting out at five grand. You got 30 seconds for this, and I'm taking away the prize money a little at a time, so buzz in as soon as you know it. Okay, now tell me, with what ad slogan does this rhyme? Move from the wrong payday, see? And, uh, don't get confused by the punctuation. It's an ad slogan for a brand of cigarettes. Come on, make me proud. Oh yeah, remember when it was unfashionable for women to get cancer? And we call this one, still a boy at heart. And 1,000 bucks is riding on this question. Who might have placed the following personal ad? Boyishly handsome single white male in search of single white female for fun, adventure, and just being a kid. Peter Pan. Meet me at the third star on the left. I swear I'll make you fly till morning. How about it? We need a category. The 7 o'clock news with question 7. The category is British monarchy and the funnies. 2,000 bucks for a right answer. Get your fingers ready. Here's one coming at you. Because she shares the same first name as three of his unfortunate wives, which comic strip character might have the best chance of marrying? Catherine of Aragon, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr were all married to Hank. Of course, Kathy would also stand a good chance of having her head cut off. Hey, at least she'd finally lose that weight she's been whining about for years. Come on, we need a category. The category, virgins and bulls. Okay, three grand coming at ya. Okay, kids, listen carefully. You know, I think that astrology is a lot of hooey, but some people really believe it. They believe that Tauruses are stubborn and a Pisces desire to invest peaks when the moon is in Scorpio and an Aries should never date a Virgo. Now, here's the question. I think astrology is a lot of what? Gobbledygook, nonsense, hooey, or horse f Your, success Your success is written, written in the stars. stars. Boy, it feels good when you don't fall for a trick question, huh? Alright, go ahead and pick one. Oh, here's number nine. Category, let's do it. A lot at stake. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. We all know beauty pageants treat women like pieces of meat. Suppose there were a meat beauty pageant. Considering the literal translation of their names, which dish would you expect to win? Steak tartare, filet mignon, ribeye, or steak... Now, ribeye sounds like some kind of carnival freak. Shoulda picked this. Filet mignon, literally cute filet. She might win based on her looks, but she won't be as popular in the talent competition as the New York Strip. Okay, pick a category. The bald Brady. Which one was bald? Alice? Whoa, I know who this is. We're talking about Alan Brady from Dick Van Dyke. Yes! Alright, uh, looks like we're making a celebrity collect call to one of the funniest men of all time. Carl Reiner. Okay, I'm down on Mr. Reiner's number. As we speak, you know, this guy pretty much invented comedy. Before him, no one laughed. They, they just opened their mouths and dust came out. Oh, uh, oh, hey, oh. Yes, hello? Yeah, I have a collect call from Buzz at You Don't Know Jack. Would you accept the charges? Uh, okay, 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 okay. Mr. Reiner, hi. Uh, it is such an honor to be speaking with you right now. Hey, 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 I, hey, hey, hey. 
I said I'm paying for the coal. You don't have to butter me up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so uh, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'll do a lot better if this is a fast call, and I don't have to accept long charges. <laughs> I'll try and make it as quick as possible. So uh, are you familiar with You Don't Know Jack? That, this is that CD-ROM game where you ask those cockamamie questions about, I don't know, uh, the Fonz, the Fish Sticks, Boutros Galley, and all that stuff, right? It's sort all of right. like Jeopardy. Uh, well, we like to think of it as a little hipper than Jeopardy. Right. Uh, Jeopardy with fart jokes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, I, you're the classy one. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, what do you want? What do you want? What are you bothering me for? I'm about to eat dinner. Uh, well, uh, we were just wondering if you could come up with a, a question for our game show. All right, I'll write a question. I uh, this is going to be great. Mr. Reiner, I, I'm going to put you in touch with my producer, Cookie, and you guys can work out a question between you two, and then we'll get back to you in a few. Um, what, Sir, what do you think? If it, do you have a producer named Cookie? Uh, don't you think you could do better? Uh, 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 Either change your name or change your producer. You don't trust anybody called Cookie. <laughs> we don't even know why, why he's called that. probably given to him, and he accepted it. He shouldn't have accepted it. <laughs> um, so where were we? Uh, Mr. Reiner, um, we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Okay, Buzz. What do you do now? You, you don't do a commercial, do you? <laughs> no, the, these contestants are pretty much glued to their keyboards uh, uh, waiting to click on something. Sounds profitable. Well, if it is, I sure don't know about it. All right, we'll be right back with Mr. Carl Reiner. But first, let's pick another category. <laughs> The category is, he washes dishes with the best of them. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, I need you to help me figure out the name of this uh, one TV character. Now, it's a fill-in-the-blank question, so you're going to have to do some typing. Now, tell me, uh, what's the name of this guy? You know, he's known for his domestic labor. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, he has this thing where he mutters to himself when he wants to insult somebody. He is also famous for being on two different sitcoms. And the really weird thing is, is go crazy. Type. Perhaps the only housekeeper to rise to the ranks of Lieutenant Governor Benson Dubois. If you ask me, I think he should run for U.S. Congress. I mean, hell, if Sonny Bono can do it, Benson's a shoe in Okay, round one is history. Let's move on to round two. Okay, pay attention, because all the questions. Okay, we are back on our celebrity collect call with Mr. Carl Reiner. Mr. Reiner, uh, did you come up with a question? Actually, I didn't. I have about four or five answers, but I have no questions. Oh, uh, uh, um... Of course I came up with a question. You asked me to come up with a question, didn't you? Yeah. Well, why would you think I wouldn't come up with a question? <laughs> did you want me to come up with a question? Absolutely. Well, I've got one. I think we should hear it then. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right, let her rip. The category is before you were born. And we're going to make this one worth $5,000. Put your fingers on the buzzer. Here's the question. Before Dick Van Dyke immortalized the role of Robert Petrie on the Dick Van Dyke show, who was... Mr. Reiner, they picked me. Me. That's right. I played Robert Petrie in the pilot. <laughs> I actually wrote the pilot for myself, for me. But when Sheldon Leonard saw the pilot, read the pilot, he said, you aren't a good one to play you. We can get a better you. And they got Dick Van Dyke, who became me. But he's not me. He's him. And him is better than me. So they didn't let you do you? Yes, I never did a good me. I do a better them than I do me. Them? Never listen to them. They don't know. Wait, you? Me, you, you, me, he, they, when. Look, you and I are a we, right? <laughs> We've been on the air too long now. We got to stop doing this. Can we stop? Uh, yeah, that's that's probably a pretty good idea. Okay. Mr. Reiner, thank you so much for your question. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm. Uh, are we done now? <laughs> yeah, bye, Mr. Reiner. Goodbye, bud. <laughs> Man, I couldn't get a word in edgewise with that guy. <laughs> Mr. Carl Reiner, everybody. Father of all things funny. All right, uh, let's pick another category. How about it? 
12. Celebrity voice. All right, next up, the Bermuda Love Triangle. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Guess what? You're going on vacation. Say you just signed up for the Bermuda Love Triangle Tour Package. The package includes three days and nights for you and two of your closest friends to visit the three hotspots that make up the Bermuda Triangle. Where will you be going? Bermuda, Aruba, and Jamaica. Bermuda, Kahlua. Bermuda, Miami, and San Juan are the three points of the Bermuda Triangle. Hopefully you won't go down with your friends there. I said with. Come on, we need a category. I love 13 number 13. Uh -huh. Okay, coming up this category is Bill and Ted's Excellent Renaissance. This one's worth $4,001 bills. Imagine that Bill of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure travels to 16th century Europe to study art. He later tells Ted about one particular piece of art he grew fond of. When you know the answer, buzz in and type in the answer. Dude, I saw this most excellent picture. Jesus and these 12 other dudes. They're like kissing his ass. You know, they're at a dinner table. It's a total munch fest. Now, what famous painting is Bill and Ted? Show it The painting Bill is so eloquently described is Da Vinci's masterpiece, The Last Supper. <laughs> and he probably described the winged victory as that chick with no head. Alright, go ahead and pick one. We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. And this question's category is Beckett Goes Network. And this one's worth $4,000. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Imagine someone got a script from the show Happy Days mixed up with a copy of the Samuel Beckett play Happy Days. Which wacky scenario might result? Howard's children betray the main character and Beckett's Happy Days spends the entire play stuck in a mud pile. <laughs> Marion Cunningham just spends her time stuck in outdated gender roles. Pick your pick, what do you say? Na, 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 this one's gonna be, how can she have the gall? This one's worth six grand. Hang on tight, cause here we go. Which of the following methods of birth control could best describe former French President Charles de Gaulle's approach to his nation's military De Gaulle pulled France out of NATO's military. But ironically, I'll bet NATO will be there to comfort France next time France gets screwed. Okay, pick a category. Excellent choice. It's time to play Dis or Dad. And the category for this Dis or Dad question is... The Fab 12. All right, I'm going to read off seven. Oh, all right, you already know how to play. Well, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. James, Beetle or Apostle? George. Simon. Paul. Ringo. John. Matthew. Okay, you skipped one. Let's go back. James, Beetle or Apostle? That's all she wrote. Five rides. Solid mediocrity. Really? Let's throw that cash into your total. Every little bit helps, huh? All right, let's keep going. How about it? We need a category. Shake your thing, keep it clean, 17. Category. The Dukes of Hazard and Transportation. And this one's worth $2,000. Imagine this occurrence in an episode of The Dukes of Hazard. Boss Hog decides to buy a two-wheeler to chase down the Duke Boys, based on its nickname, which make of motorcycle might he prefer? BMW, Suzuki, Harley-Davidson, or Yamaha?
A BMW looks like y'all is SOL. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. Harley Davidsons are popularly known as hogs. Of course, if he decides to show his boss hog to Daisy Duke, he might have to arrest himself on obscenity charges. Take your pick. What do you say? 18. And this category is, she's on an irritating kids show. Why do you ask? Get this right, get $2,000. All right, fingers limber, cause here comes the question. That darn Carmen Sandy. Hey, quick draw, you want it that way? Why don't you... Uh-oh, I thought so. Now the correct answer is... Pangea is what scientists call the continents when they were still all stuck together. That was during the Mesozoic era, so you'll need a time machine to bring her back. Or you could just go back and break Carmen's time machine and solve that problem for good. Alright, go ahead and pick one. And we call this one, Questions That Make Me Want a Frosty Beverage. 4,000 bucks behind this one. Look very carefully at this picture, won't you? And tell me, which fictitious, crass commercial remake of a classic movie would this picture best represent? David Chesterfield, Dr. Shivago at Spago, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hydebed, or Dr. B it's a poster for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hydebed. <laughs> the real horror is trying to fold those damn things back up in the morning. Come on, we need a category. The Fresh Saver. 20. This category is Locker Room Braggarts. We got four grand on the table. Okay, you're hanging out in the locker room, and once again, some jock claims to be hung like a whore. Say the braggart is standing at full attention. Because it's the unit used to measure the height of horses, what's the... Horses are measured in hands. It's about four inches. So, ladies, next time a guy offers to give you a hand, tell him they should make it, too. Take your pick. What do you say? Ah, you've been here before. Well, hope you're prepared this time. Here's your clue. We haven't seen hide nor hair of them. And I'll see you on the other side. I'll be waiting.
build back up your electrolyte count with these words. Great show, uh, roll commercials, and uh, Cookie, what's going on here? So you're on the high scoreboard of You Don't Know Jack, and to be this good at trivia must mean that you have no life. And, you know, I, I, I'm not proud of you. I pity you, actually. But hey. Okay, man. No problem. Okay. One player. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Can we get a spot? Can we get a move? 30 seconds. Well, I see coffee prices haven't slowed you down. Okay, everybody. Let's get this show on the road. I need... <laughs> For your enjoyment, grab your beret and wake the kids. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Hey, it's time for the Family Avant-Garde Film Fest. Now each week we recreate a cutting-edge movie that is carefully censored for family viewing. Let's hear a clip from this week's show. Any of you move and I'll execute every mother last one of you! What film are we recreating? Angel Pulp Fiction, Thelma and Louise, or Mary Poppins? No, it's not from Thelma and Louise. Though I did hear Gina Davis use some similar language toward the end of the Cutthroat Island shoot. Should have picked this. You're hearing a heavily censored moment from Pulp Fiction. It's still pretty good, but the part where Travolta gets shot sounds like this. Ow! Oh, goodness! All right. The category is whatever it takes to make Jason Bateman a star. How does two thousand dollars sound? All right, put your buzzers on your fingers. Here comes an analogy question. New Amsterdam is to New York as Val New Amsterdam became New York when the English took over, and Valerie became the Hogan family when Sandy Duncan took over. And most people don't realize, but before it was called Valerie, it was called Constantinople. Category, please. One, two, two, praise be almighty three. This little number's known as... I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. You know, to get from Swaziland to Switzerland in a dictionary, you pretty much just have to turn the page. But if you take the most direct land route from Swaziland to Switzerland, which of these countries will you not pass through? South Africa? You mean the country that Swaziland is basically surrounded by? I think it's time to divest some money from your score. Bet you wish you'd pick this. The most direct land route from Swaziland in Southern Africa to Switzerland definitely doesn't pass through South America's Guiana. But if you're heading to Swaziland, then you pass through the land of dirty dancing and the country where ghosts like to do pottery. Okay. Stop at three, no, you gotta head four, yeah! Now serving, letters never spent. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, I hope you've been paying attention. You remember those two countries I mentioned a couple of questions ago? You know, Switzerland and Swaziland. Which of these letters is in both countries' names? T, I, R, or E? Yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> The letters S, W, Z, L, A, N, D, and I are all in both Switzerland and Swaziland. Thank God somebody has some memory retention skills. Okay. Let's blow this down and head for number five. This one's called playing footsies with men in armor. This one can net you a grand. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If King Arthur had gathered his knights around the Algonquin Round Table, what might they have used to fight off their enemies? Hard-hitting documentary films, rapier-like wit and biting sarcasm, pounding defensive tackles, or whipping cream and cutting boards? The Algonquin Round Table was a 1920s group of writers and artists known for their sharp wit.
axes and broadswords may sever my limbs, but smart-ass quips will never hurt me. All right, hit me. Say hello to, I see a morality tale in your future, and you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Listen up, because you're going to have to come up with the answer on your own here. Get ready to buzz in and fill in the blank when you can tell me who's getting their fortune told. I see travel in your future, perhaps through the woods to a relative's house where you'll meet a... It's all yours. Little Red Riding Hood takes a trip through the forest to her grandmother's house only to find the big bad wolf dressed up in grandma's PJs. Yeah. yeah, leave it to your grandmother to fix you up with a wolf. But he makes a good living. Category. Seven lucky lucky. This one likes to go by. That's a big latrine you've got. $3,000 for this one. Imagine you're having dinner at the Clampett's house. Damn, see, now, now all I can think about is Little Red Riding Hood. Thanks a lot. Uh, the hell with it. Try this. Imagine the Big Bad Wolf had attacked Little Red Riding Hood when she was just a baby. Considering that this part of a baby's body remains the same size and... The eyes have it. Our eyes don't get any larger than the size they are at birth. Why, I hardly recognized you, Big Bad Wolf. You've got my grandmother's eyes. Now give them back. I need a category. Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. It's time for Flemish Lesson. Take a look at your gibberish category. Broken bones and inopportune noises. Let's get the ball rolling at 5K for this gibberish question. Now, don't get nervous, but the more time you take, the less cash you get. All right, tell me, which film title does this rhyme with? Anything squish, stay splint. And don't think about that punctuation. First clue, the story of a horribly burned man. The story of a horribly burned man that won. Run with it, type it. The English Patient is a very, very good movie. I haven't seen it, and I don't really plan to, but I can tell you that it's very, very good. Okay, I... Aloha, question number nine. And this one is... Horny little buggers. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. Put it in gear, because here we go. Imagine that a particularly horny ant is looking at a centerfold of some fine insect booty. Based on the three parts of an insect's body, what would he not blurt out in his lust? I'd love a piece of that thorax. Look at that washboard ab No insects have an abdomen. How do you get those abs so hard? Well, I have an exoskeleton. <laughs> the correct answer is... A Sternum is not part of an insect, that's part of a vertebrate's rib cage. So, the ant is excited, but not evolved enough to have a bone. Okay, pick it. Alright, time to get hot and bothered, cause you've been invited to a three-way. Okay, this is simple, but hear me out anyway. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. Okay, looks like you've been around. I won't bore you with my naivete. Let's turn this baby on. Looks like her category for this one is Mis Amigos. And that means we're going to be joined by Chase Martin or Short. Time to start seeing the goods. Let's hope you're up to it. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Yes. That 
that's all we got. Now, let's see how you did. A little sloppy, but I still love you. Let's see what this earnest attempt did to your overall score. So, is it as good for you as it was for me? Probably better. Okay, let's get on with the game. Okay, either you finished round one, or you have another round to go. You know, depending on how you look at these things. Now remember, everything in round two is... Category, please. The selection is... Mom, I don't want horseshoes for breakfast. Set up straight. This one's worth $6,000. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. If Lucky the Leprechaun used technical terms to list the different marshmallows in Lucky Charms, which of these would not be included? Pink hollow muscular organs, yellow crystallized carbon gems, orange gaseous celestial bodies, or green leafy leguminous herbs. <laughs> There are no yellow diamonds in a box of Lucky Charms. The diamonds are blue. <laughs> if you're lucky, though, you might find a surprise yellow diamond ring at the bottom of the box. I need a cat. I'm getting a reading of 12. And I believe this one's called... What? That is $4,000 grab you. Okay, most of us are aware of the hearing loss suffered by the composer Ludwig van Beethoven. But did you know he's back and playing in your community orchestra? Say during a concert, Beethoven mishears the conductor and plays a chicken and... The pizzicato is the plucking of strings on an instrument. Good thing it didn't ask him to play vibrato. That would have gotten him arrested. Okay, I need a caddy. <laughs> well, looks like this category is torn between two lovers. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. Say you're King Minus of Greek mythology and you're jealous of your wife's past infidelity. If you want to keep her from being tempted again, to which sporting event should you not take her? Uh, no, she did not have an affair with a greyhound. <laughs> See, now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. King Minus' wife had sex with a bull and gave birth to the Minotaur. And no matter how much she insists she wants to go to the rodeo just to watch, don't believe her. Okay, pick a category. Ain't no love like number 14. May I introduce less enjoyable ways to go blind? Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Heads up, here it comes. Which of the following could you hook up to your computer that would not be another kind of monitor? A Civil War battleship, a Komodo dragon, a mythical bovine animal, or a grade school hall sentry? Mythical bovine animal? Hmm, let's see, that would be a, a, a minotaur, wouldn't it? <laughs> Way to go, you really grab the bull by the horns, just like King Minus' wife. All right. Looks like there's no lack of bravado here. You've chosen an impossible question. This category is known as panting for dollars. And let's see, this one's only worth uh, $20,000. All right, get ready to fill in the blank for this one. You know how long distance races are usually measured in kilometers like a 5K or 10K race? Suppose that instead of a 401K plan, your boss will give you a million dollars if you... Go for it. Type in your answer and hit... Re Let's see, 401 times .62 equals 248.62 miles. Pretty impressive. Uh, I'm not going to say anything important here, so you have some time to put away that calculator now. Okay, I need a category. I got some good news for you. You're about to move into a dis or dad. And this dis or dat questions category is 
I wouldn't wear that if I were you. Okay, I'm gonna read off. Uh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. And we're off. Cashmere, fabric or dress? Charmin. Flannel. Lame. Quilted Northern. Burlap. One more. Spandex. That's all she Check it out. Oh yeah, that's a real nice fit, isn't it? Uh, let's keep moving. I need a category. On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. Let's see what we got going. Innocent victims of childish pranks. $2,000 says you don't know this one. I love prank phone calls, don't you? Let's listen in. Hello, ye old stuff. Can I help you? Yeah, do you have Prince Albert in a can? Why, yes we do. What kind of story? Prince Albert is a kind of tobacco. <laughs> and you better let him out or he might suffocate. <laughs> All right, hit me. Here we have bad parts of the cow. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Hey, you know Sam the Butcher from the Brady Bunch, right? Well, say Sam wants to be alone with Alice. If he asks to meet her in an area of high crime and corrupt business, where might Alice say she's going? I'm meeting Sam by the tenderloin? Sam and I... No, but you just know Sam was only after Alice for her rump roast. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. <laughs> New York and San Francisco both have legendary tenderloins. The areas were nicknamed because corrupt cops made lots of easy cash. So Sam wants to meet her there. Well, Sam always was the romantic one. Shake hands with flannel shirts, coffee, and slugs. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Let's see how you handle this one. You've heard of making love like dogs, but if people made love like freshwater snails, what results would we get? The female would move in. The female will eat the male? Yeah, baby! Wait, 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 wait. We're talking about slugs here. That's, that's revolting. For the curious, here's the right answer. Both the male and female freshwater snails become fertilized and lay eggs, which gives the male snail even less reason to call her after the first date. Category, please. Okay, give it up for... It's a dog! It's a game for old people! Wait, it's both! Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Remember that song about the farmer and his dog? Well, let's change the subject of the song and you tell me the next lyric. <clears throat> Okay, I haven't done this in a while. There was a nationalist who was really arrogant. What is the best choice for the next lyric? Now, if Dingo was his name, oh, then he'd be a nationalist who ate Meryl Streep's baby in a cry in the dark. And loser is your name, oh. Jingo is one who practices jingoism, which is a really arrogant form of nationalism or patriotism. And Jingo was my favorite beetle, too. I need... Time for the attack. When you see two... Ah, you think you know the attack, huh? I got news for you. Not all attacks are equal. Here's your clue. I'm not what I used to be. Well, let's see what you can be. Here's your chance.
player, it, it's like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer and go make some friends, cuz... You don't know Jack! Very nice work, people. Let's get those commercials going. Raul, hon, we doing this again? Hey, I don't want to pressure you into anything you don't want to do, but you know, we got everything all set up, everybody's here. Hello, it's nice to see you. How many contestants are there? Oh, so there's only one of you. That's fine. There's only one of me too. Is this the first time on... Excellent. It's always great to play with experienced professionals. May I have your name, please? Thanks a lot. If you feel like buzzing, use the letter B. And now, it's time for the best part of the ride. Remember, you're always getting closer to the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack the Ride is sponsored by Birth of Christ Miracle Carpet Cleaners. Jesus Christ, that's one immaculate carpet. And now, here's your host, Nate Shapiro. Woo! Hey, welcome! Age before beauty, huh? Glad you were able to scoot your ancient bones up to the keyboard, Grandma. <laughs> That's right, you got yourself down to the BC floor, and that means the bottom's coming. Sooner than you think. Good luck. Hey, buddy. There's the cash, and here's the category. Who died in made AD the new era? Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. What's the PC way to write BC? BC means before Christ. BCE means before the common era. Makes sense to me. I mean, not all of us are Christian, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus. Time that... Okay, and that's going to be served up with a category called... A debate older than Christ. Hey, you know how there's that ongoing debate between drinkers of Bud and drinkers of Bud Light, right? Well, if there were a debate between something that hops and a hoplite... Well, cash money. Hoplites were the soldiers of ancient Greece. They, in fact, were neither less filling nor tasted great, but, man, they made some killer statues of naked women. Okay, okay this one's going to be worth some coin. All right, here's your category. BC really stands for Before CNN. So, do you remember CNN correspondent Arthur Kent's nickname during the Gulf War? Yeah, he was the big old scud stud. If there had been televised coverage of the Peloponnesian War, which when he wrote about the war between Sparta and Athens, Thucydides became the first Western historian to cover current events. And unlike Wolf Blitzer, he was not mocked for having a silly name. Okay, there you go. Okay, the category is... I ain't no good with numbers and letters. Okay, put your finger on your buzzer and get ready. Here we go. According to the commutative laws of mathematics, which of these is equal... C plus B. You see? That answer be wrong. <laughs> Here's what you should have guessed. According to the commutative laws of math, B times C is the same as C times B for any numbers B and C. Honestly, I don't even know who makes these laws. I mean, God knows. I don't remember liking any mathematicians. But... Bingo. There was a man with Roman hands and slaps her. What he got? Oh. Okay, now remember to buzz in when the first letter of the answer lights up in order to win the cash. Of course, if you light up all five letters, you get the bonus. 
Okay, let's make it happen. Here we go. Be all you can be in the blank. Roger that. The red planet. Mars. Fiddles like Henny Youngman. Nero. People's blank of China. Race Publique! One more letter you got! Here we go! Anthony in love with Cleopatra! Mark Anthony! Group sex! Baby! Alright, there's where you're at, kiddo. Let's keep going. Okay. okay, that's what's on the line, and here's the category. Where NASCAR racers go to die. You know how during a race, race car drivers have to periodically pull their cars into the pits? You know, to change tires and oil and wash windshields and stuff? Anyway... If NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt accidentally pulled his car into the La Brea tar pit... The La Brea tar pits are in Los Angeles and contain a bunch of prehistoric animal skeletons. Hmm, sounds like another one of them Tyrannosaurus Rex. Get it? Rex? Car accidents? NASCAR? Okay, that'll be our value, and the category is... The Gods of Classic Rock. All right, you might know that Rome used to be ruled by a triumvirate, which is a small group of people who shared control. Well, tell me this then. In its heyday, which of these classic rock bands ruled by triumvirate? Hello, Rome. So you love the classics? How about a little bitar in the snow dog? Those three Canadians make a triumvirate. And you know what? No matter what Brian Adams fans say about there being a new emperor, Rush still rules. Buzz in for the... Oh, man, I got that much in my couch. All right, here's your category. Not British, yet not Colombian either. You got your finger ready to buzz? Okay, let's get it on. Which NBA team's home is in BC? The Grizzlies. British Columbia's hoopsters are from Vancouver. But uh, keep it under your hat. The folks in Vancouver aren't really wanting for the word to get out about it. Ho! Oh, looks like it's time to run over poor defenseless animals. Don't forget you gotta buzz in when you see the answer that unites the pair of items on the screen. And don't forget to pay attention to all the correct answers if you want that bonus. Okay, baby, pedal to the metal. Here we go. Band better than Blank and Poet Pound. What do these two things have in common? Answers have in common. Are they all? Roman emperors. Both of the Old Testament. Shemang. Holy Moses. Well, welcome to the promised land. Here's your milk and honey. Hey, your finger's still feeling limber after that? Hope so. Talk to me. Give me Okay, the category is... Pharaohs with monkeys on their backs. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. 
Suppose an ancient Egyptian attic tried to shoot up with Cleopatra's... Cleopatra's needles are two huge stone obelisks that are now eroding in New York and London. Yeah, they really shouldn't leave dirty needles lying around. Okay, pretty righteous. All right, here's your category. Yeah, but Delta do. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Considering the meaning of the prefix Dino, what could you assume about the Flintstones pet? He's cold. He's a terrible pet. I mean, he doesn't even look like a dog. Okay, what's the... Hello! Nice shooting, baby. Here's your category. What's five miles long and full of spacemen? Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. If the space station on Babylon 5 crashed in ancient Babylon, with what wondrous thing would it most... The Hanging Gardens of Babylon is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Egyptian pyramids are the only wonders left today, and I bet the other six were destroyed by the Centauri Republic. Damn those Centauri bastards! Hey, I'd like to introduce a special guest for this Jack Attack, one of our editors, Brian Chard. Thank you, Nate. Ready? Here's your clue. Hello, I'm BC. This is a Jack Attack all about me. Good luck. I must have seen mortgage 50 times already, and I'm back for more. I've never personally dealt with the pain of a foreclosure, but up there on stage with the singing and the dancing, mortgage makes it seem so real. I thought my kids' problems with ADD were something I had to hide, but it was so empowering to see that soccer mom fight. My child doesn't listen. My child cannot sleep. Doped up on Ritalin, he always makes me weep. He cannot concentrate, he tries to masturbate. I'd pay 15% plus 50 points to see Mortgage again. I mean, just think about it, pot smoking teens, philandering husbands, mothers addicted to painkillers. It's got everything. Mortgage is the true suburbia. It's not every day you see a couple from two different tax brackets. Suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, find true love. I love the tax assessor. Drive the babysitter home. We'll Hi there, welcome to this thing we call Jack. Now, what kind of game do you want to play? Network or home? How many? How many people? All right, tell me, my friend. All right, that'll do it. Does my star pupil want me to begin? Oh, can't be bothered. Fine. Godspeed. Choose your alter ego.
dimension where high culture and pop culture collide. It's time for the X episode. Join us, won't you, as we attempt to understand why those silly French people insist on ending words with a silent X. Silly French people. Hello there, this is You Don't Know Jack. I'm Schmitty, and you are playing by yourself. Don't worry, nothing to be ashamed of. I've tried it. Okay, put down the instruction manual. It's time to get started. Give me a little buzzer action, and I'll give you an amount. The value of this question comes to $4,000. Allow me to introduce... It's the story of a lame pen and paper game. Okay, picture this. The beginning of the Brady Bunch, and all the Bradys and Alice are in those nine blue squares, right? Well... In a game of Brady Bunch Tic-Tac-Toe, how many ways could you win if you draw an X through Jan? One, two, three, or four? Wrong, wrong, wrong! Why didn't you pick this one? Although, since she's in the center square, there's a whole bunch of ways you could win with Alice. Just ask Sam. Grab that value. Here's what we're looking at. 1,500. The category? Row, row, row your boat gently through the oil. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. Which of the following was most likely heard from the captain of the Exxon Valdez right before the oil spill? Sound one. Oh, yeah. Take it off. Take it all off. Sound two. <laughs> Sound three. Well, that hits a, a spot. <laughs> or sound four. Man overboard! Well, this is beautiful. The Exxon Valdez disaster happened because the captain was drunk. So some Joe Schmo sailor boy didn't have his driver's license yet was steering the boat instead. Captain, the ship's gonna hit something! <laughs> you said ship! Everybody's gotta do another shot! Grab a value. Well, looks like we hit the jackpot on this one. 10,000 bucks. Okay, flesh nut slit slime snore. It's time for... Hey, remember, try and solve it quick so you can win more cash. The opening value for this one is 10,000 bucks. Okay, take a look at this and tell me what it rhymes with. And uh, don't let that punctuation throw you off. Ben-Hur may shun sex. First clue, it's a phrase coined by Douglas Copeland. Well, it's not dynamite. It's a phrase used to describe an... Now's the time to type in your answer and hit that return key. You know, I don't really buy into this whole Generation X is a bunch of slackers idea. I mean, if that's true, what's up with the $5 cups of espresso? How do they afford that crap? Buzz in for the amount. Let's see the amount on this one. Five grand. This category is known as Your Parents Hate You. Brace yourself, this might sting a little. Which of the following is the best example of an ex-cathedra declaration? Just wait until your father gets home. Because I'm your mother, that's why. Nobody likes a tattletale. Or ch An ex-cathedra statement is one that you're supposed to believe because whoever said it is really important. Like the Pope. Or my mom. Either way, whatever. You know, I don't have to take orders from some bossy jerk in a dress. Or my mom, for that matter. Pick any amount. And here's what you can win on this question. 4750. May I introduce? Typing in all caps really turns me on. Okay, let's go. 
Which of these demonstrates someone in an online chat room attempting to slip his cyber girlfriend the tongue? X X X X X X X X X Solius. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Lingua. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Love It's the more scientific and erotic name for a tongue, the lingua. Oh yeah, baby, you really turned me on. You're hot. Oh yeah. Oh wait, sorry. Got to go put a new bid on eBay for the Battlestar Galactica lunchbox. Value time. I bet you're gonna become very intimate with that value. You're about to jump head first into a dissertat. And this Dissertat Questions category is Hermaphrodites? Okay, how about this? I read off seven names, you tell me what to read. All right, Charles in charge. You think you know the rules? I'm just going to put 30 seconds on the clock. And we're off. Pat Sage. Pat Benatar. Pat Boone. Pat Morita. Pat Bradley. Pat Robertson. One more. Pat Nixon. That's it. Well, look at you, six out of seven over there. Let's see how it helps out your score. Well, you certainly didn't have that before, did you? Kicking them out. The amount on this question is four thousand two hundred and fifty bucks. Up next, John Maynard Keynes wore deck shoes. Yeah, Gen Xers. <laughs> Hey, take a look at this. If a Gen Xer isn't getting the same enjoyment out of his ninth cup of Starbucks vanilla latte and his fifteenth pair of Gap khakis, as the noted economist Thomas Malthus once said, "The more you buy the same thing, the more it sucks." Dude, I cannot stay in the Starbucks any longer. I need a fresh scene, man. Something a little less trendy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's go over to that Barnes and Noble. Get a value. The price on this question is forty-seven fifty. For your enjoyment, it came from Hollywood. Ah, Xanadu, a mythical place of mystery and awe-inspiring majesty. Which of these internet searches will most likely lead you to Xanadu? John Wayne plus car wash plus funky robot. Gene Kelly plus roller disco plus heavenly music. Beautiful. All right, you're listening. We get this.、Uh, we get this muse, right? This muse, and she she she, she floats. She floats down from、uh, from heaven, right? And she、uh, she hangs out with this uh, 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 disco roller skating guy, right? See, he's got a disco and he roller skates. Oh, and we get Gene Kelly. He's still alive, right? Yeah, Gene Kelly. Go ahead and choose a value. The reward for this one is. Four thousand dollars. Open wide and get ready for the butt that sat on Xmas. Boy, how about that Santa Claus, huh? He sure is fat. In fact, one of these days, his fat ass ain't gonna fit down that chimney. If the elves have to use lard to grease down Santa's big ass, what? Oh, I'm sorry. That says butt. <clears throat> If the elves have to use lard to grease down Santa's big ass, lard is fat from a hog. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! We're no more presents for anybody. <laughs> Time to pick a value. And here's what you're working with: two thousand five hundred. Now, what did I do with my fly swatter? You're about to bug out. Try and remember. Buzz in when you see a bug that does not belong to the set. And you'll be working up to a final round value of two thousand five hundred. Okay. Anybody that hits the X key in the next three seconds wins an extra twenty thousand points. Go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's get to the real action. Cities in Texas. Buzz in when you see one that ain't.
Summer X Games. Things that equal ten. Existentialist philosophers. X Files characters. Excluding the double and triple word score and letter score stuff. <laughs> well, you kicked some butt. Not much, but some. Go ahead and grab an amount. Let's see what the value of this question is. Thirty-five hundred bucks. I believe this one is called. If you show me your Hancock, I'll show you mine. All right, take a look at this analogy and see if you can figure out what completes it. John Hancock is to Declaration of Independence as Xavier Roberts is to Mr. Potato. Xavier Roberts signs all the Cabbage Patch Kids' asses. Uh, butts. He signs their butts. I need help. That gives a whole new meaning to sign on the dotted line, huh? Take a value. Let's see what this one's worth to you. Seventeen fifty. The category is alone, alone on the range. Say now, you're one of those lucky ones who are familiar with that George Strait song, "All My Exes Live in Texas," right? Well. If George Strait has as many ex-wives as there are stars on the Texas state flag, how many exes will he have in Texas? One, four, five, or fifty? Oddly enough, the Lone Star State has only one star on the state flag. But in an attempt to avoid paying alimony to any of his exes, Mr. Strait hangs his hat in Tennessee. How about a value? Let's see what this one comes to. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty bucks. The category is hot throbbing chromosomes. Flex those fingers. Here it comes. What would be the most appropriate rating for a porno film starring super females? X, double X, triple X, or XXY? X. That answer contains material not intended for intelligent players. The correct answer is: Super females have triple X chromosome syndrome. But before you get your hopes up and go running out to your local video store, you ought to know that that X chromosome is the only extra thing they've got. Buzz in for the value. Here's your total value for this one: three thousand dollars. Here's a little something I call a demon question on wheels. Hey, you know that Speed Racer cartoon and how Speed had that、uh, Racer X guy as sort of his secret guardian? Well, I was thinking, if Speed Racer enters the famous Le Mans Grand Prix, how long will Racer X have to stay awake and watch? My close personal friends in Le Mans are host to the famous Le Mans 24-hour Grand Prix race. A 24-hour race. Sounds more like Grand P, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and pick an amount. I hope you're strapped in, 'cause here it comes.
Well, you've made it to the Jack Attack. Now, you should already know all about this. Let's not waste any more time. Need a clue? She's pretty. He's dumped. Don't forget, somebody else's ex-partner could be your new sex partner. Am I right? Huh? Huh? A million! Let's see how you jacked up your score! There it is! Way to go, my friend. Like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer, will ya? Because... America's number one. <sighs> oh, oh, hoy there. G good morning to ye. Doing the early morning trivia thing, eh? What? What be wrong with ye? Game <laughs> time. You got one? Tell it to me now, mate. Excellent. Nice. Whoa, where be the fire, Speedy? Fine, I'll wrap it up. Start your voyage and remember to get as much loot as you can. You did well last voyage. Just, let's keep it up, okay? Now, be gone! Welcome. How you doing? Good to see you. How are the kids? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, enough of the nice stuff. And we're off. Time to select a category. The category, fashion emergency indeed. 4,000 bucks if you get this. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. If GQ or Gentlemen's Quarterly featured cover models who were drawn and quartered, they'd be headless, their entrails would be pulled out and burned, and their bodies would be cut into four pieces. And you just know that, like, in a week, every guy in America would be doing it. Go ahead, pick a category. This category is known as Hats Entertainment, and this baby's worth 6,000 big ones. Let's see how you handle this one. Which of these is not an actual place where you can hang your hat? Fedora, Italy. Travel all you want to. You ain't gonna find a fedora in Italy. But I'll tell you, you won't believe what they put on their heads in Jacques Strap, France. Wanna pick a category? Let's have a big warm welcome for Never Pick Up a Hitchhiker Wearing an Eye Patch. This one's worth 4000 bucks. Hey, now, you've heard that Bob Dylan lyric about how many roads a man has to walk before you can call him a man, right? Well, tell me, how many miles must a man walk before... 1.15 miles? 
is a nautical mile. <laughs> and as pirates always say, you can't judge a man until you've walked a nautical mile in his shoes, with a peg leg and a parrot on your shoulder. They go on to say, Arrgh! So, what's it going to be? Oh, look what this is. It's time for a... Glitter Fest Fest Man. Let's take a look at your category. Let's give a shout out to Colonel Sanders. The opening value for this one is $10,000. Okay, I'm going to show you a gibberish phrase. You figure out what it rhymes with and buzz in. The faster you move, the more cash you make. All right, take a look at this gibberish phrase and tell me what it rhymes with. If you're uh. Boy, six million dollars sure doesn't go as far as it used to, huh? I mean, for that kind of money today, you might be able to get a bionic kidney. Used. Time to make a choice. The category is in Continental Congress. Four thousand bucks if you get this. Oh, the Fourth of July picnic. A picture of Americana. And as sticklers for accuracy know, a total lie. As a stickler for accuracy, you save your Fourth of July picnic food until the day on which Congress actually began signing the formal declaration. The Continental Congress approved the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776, but only began formally signing it on August 2nd. <laughs> After you eat your month-old potato salad, however, your innards will secede from your body more or less right away. Go ahead and pick one of these. I'm calling this one. Boy, does Snuffy have egg on his face? Get it right, I'm handing over four thousand bucks. Oh no! It looks like Sesame Street's Big Bird is doubled over in some sort of pain. If Big Bird suddenly laid the largest egg of any living animal, whoop, ostriches lay the largest eggs of any living animal. Now the real question is, who laid Big Bird? How about picking a category? Welcome to the Jack Attack. Take note. Well, all right then. Let's get to it. Try this clue. Rhymes with chunt. Get your mind out of the gutter and your finger on your buzzer. Best player we had. Now do me a favor. Look to your left. Now look to your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack. You don't know.